Thank you very much for the introduction and for inviting me for this session. Hi, everyone. My name is Hesam, and I'm working as Deputy Director of the MIT Concrete Sustainability Hub. Today, I'm going to uh, share some of the lessons that we learned from the ACI Eco Concrete Competition. Believe it or not, we've been uh, holding this competition, competition since 2017 when I was a PhD student at the University of Sherbrooke. We put together the rules and a small tool to quantify the environmental impacts. And then uh, we had this analysis uh, and shared with the students as well. So again, uh, why is it important to consider concrete? We are facing this versatile, constructible, durable, economical, and available materials around the world. And everyone is using that uh, for urbanization. And we are going to use that in the future more and more because of the population growth and our demand in the future. And because of all these benefits, uh, this is part of our daily construction. But we have to think about this huge amount of materials, more than 4 billion tons of cement and maybe 30 billion tons of concrete um, per year is produced around the world. And we have to think about how to reduce the environmental impacts of uh, these concrete mixtures. And the idea of eco-concrete comes from uh, this important research question. And we put together the main objective as to promote the environmental impact uh, as an important part of the sustainability of concrete uh, with regards to the performance. Many other uh, sustainability evaluation uh, do not usually consider the performance, but we as engineers know that it's important to consider and make the decision with regards to what we call here as performance. And it could be Defined in different ways, we have hardened uh, performance, including the mechanical durability properties, aesthetic, uh, aesthetic purposes, or aesthetic functionality. These are all different aspects that we can include. But in this competition, in addition to uh, the environmental assessment, which was conducted through life cycle assessment, we considered durability as the main mechanism and determining factors for uh, the performance of the mixtures. And for that, for this competition, we uh, asked these questions that how can we estimate and improve the service life of concrete performance when it's exposed to the aggressive environment? And for that purpose, we use this Life 365 tool to enable the students quantify the service life of the concrete given a specific uh, exposed conditions and uh, concrete uh, uh, dimensions as well. This is about the performance for life cycle assessment. As you probably know, it's a quantitative method that will help us quantify the environmental impacts of any products or services, including concrete mixtures. And it assesses the environmental impacts from very early stage of the production, raw material extraction, then we consider the production, use, and end of life, whether we recycle, reuse, or landfill that product. So cradle to grave uh, scope. But for the purpose of this competition, uh, we definitely focused on the uh, raw material extraction and production of the materials for the sake of simplicity and assuming that during the use and end of life, we have equal performance in terms of the environmental impacts. What did we ask from the students? We asked them to design two different mixtures. One is the base case scenario. Here, I just use this abbreviation BCS. And the other one is alternative case scenario, ACS. In the base case scenarios, they consider um, you know, regular, ordinary Portland cement plus uh, virgin aggregates and uh, water, tap water for their mix design. And in their alternative, cases, uh, uh, alternative case, they have to maximize the amount of environmental benefits while thinking about the durability as the performance factor. So it's a kind of trade-off, and we gave different weights to these two different uh, uh, mixed design, and we are going to uh, measure their difference based on the streamlined LCA tool that we developed, and I will show you, and also the service life prediction using Life 365. And uh, for the service life uh, uh, simulation, like I said, it's uh, Life 365, and you have different uh, ingredients uh, prescribed already and included in Life 365, and it enables the students to choose different proportions and different components, binary, ternary, and quaternary mixture uh, to achieve the maximum performance in terms of the service life extension. <clears throat> How did we do the LCA? We just 
uh, when I was a PhD student, we developed a, at a ACI student chapter at the University of Sherbrooke. We created this uh, Excel-based tool. It's available on the ACI website. Feel free to download and play with that for educational purposes, obviously. Um, here you have two different, uh, two main uh, worksheets. One is the inputs, uh, where you enter the type and quantity of the materials that you use for the mixed design. And the second one is where you see uh, the final results. And there are some color codes over there that will show you if you have uh, followed the rules and if there is any conflicts with the rules as well. <coughs> the other important aspect of this tool when you are going through the um, a cradle to gate life cycle assessment here for concrete mixture is to define um, your uh, material supplier sources because it's uh, very important for us uh, that students consider the transportation distance and the associated emissions between the source of the materials and the ready mix plant that for the sake of this competition we consider the university. So we want them to uh, definitely consider whether the materials is imported for another, from another country or whether it's locally produced and what's the associated environmental impacts. Again, the objective is to give them this holistic approach and let them think about not only the transportation distance from the uh, local distributor but very um, um, you know, uh, initial source of production. <clears throat> for example, in many countries, uh, from this uh, competition, we realized that they don't have locally available SCMs. <clears throat> For example, silicopium or fly ash in some of the countries are not produced because they don't have any coal power plants and they have to import it from uh, overseas. For uh, the environmental impact calculations, we not only focused on CO2, but we also considered other impact categories here, carcinogenic, ozone depletion, ecotoxicity, and fossil fuel depletion as five uh, main important uh, impact categories that will affect uh, the um, life cycle environmental impacts of the materials. And uh, the weighting system among these five different categories was like averaging the amount of reductions that we uh, caused by introducing our new mixture. For the uh, gradings or scoring here, we consider different weights. So we not only consider the amount of uh, reductions that they observe in terms of the environmental impacts uh, and the improvement in, in the durability, but we also try to work with them to improve their communications because we realize that we may be able to um, develop great mixed design, but we need to communicate this with our appropriate audience in an effective way. So presentation and poster uh, and interview is, uh, are two more important uh, you know, components and almost half of the uh, scores in this, uh, in this competition is assigned to this, uh, these two important metrics. What did we learn from this competition? Uh, I forgot to mention that we have held three versions of this competition. The first and the second versions uh, we were held uh, in person at the ACI convention. So the students br brought their specimens here and we tested the electrical resistivity and compressive strength. But thanks to the COVID, we went uh, virtual and since then we are um, organizing this uh, competition virtually. And the next version is going to happen after the New Orleans uh, Convention, uh, spring 2024. So these are the results of the last version happened in Atlanta, Georgia uh, Convention. And what we learned first of all is that uh, students chose mostly ternary blended cements because they thought that it gives the most out of the amount of constraints that you have in the mixed design uh, definition. And it's a combination of fly ash, slag, and silica film. More than 80% of the, um, the teams chose uh, ternary mixtures. <coughs> but why? They saw, we saw that on average, uh, ternary mixtures could improve the durability or the service life of the concrete by almost four folds, as opposed to binary mixtures that increase the durability by two folds. And the second metric, when we look at the environmental impacts, we saw that the amount of savings in terms of the average uh, environmental impacts reduction 
was uh, internally blended cement was slightly larger than the binary cement. How about the life cycle perspective? We also learned that there are not some uh, or enough clarifications in the rule, and we had to emphasize on some important points that the student, like generally civil engineering students, didn't consider. First of all was the amount of energy consumption associated with the uh, processing of the recycled materials. So when it comes to recycled materials, notionally students consider that as a burden-free or zero emission material. So they didn't assign any uh, emissions. But in reality, we see that, for example, many of these uh, materials need some post-processing activities, slag needs grinding, etc. cetera. Uh, so this is one point that we think uh, uh, and we emphasize in the new version of the, the competition in the rules as well. The second was, again, the transportation. We mentioned that in the rules, but we realized that the transportation of materials from quarry to the university was usually neglected or was partially uh, removed, meaning that again, from the distributor to the university, the transportation distance by truck was considered, but if it comes from overseas or um, in other countries, the shipping wasn't considered in the environmental impact assessment. And lastly, uh, not satisfying the minimum content of aggregates. We, we realized that when students consider recycled aggregates in their mixed design and when they wanted to define an equivalent mixed design, when they consider the virgin materials, we know that the density of these materials are quite different from each other. So when they, they design this mixture and when they consider also a different um, density of binders, they didn't adjust the quantity of the aggregates, and they consider them equals in terms of mass. So again, we consider uh, this as a penalty in, in the competition, and we again emphasize that in the new version of the rules. Overall, it was a great experience, particularly the last one uh, that we held virtually because it was sort of an equal access for all the students around the world to participate in the competition. And we had a lot of participants in, uh, from different continents, uh, Asia, Europe, and as usual, South America, Central America. And I'm just going to play uh, the video that the winner of the last competition submitted and uh, uh, share the experience with you guys as well. Concrete, one of the most widely used materials of I'm sorry, I just want to go towards the end when the world has been used the, uh, the Concrete, one of the most widely used materials of the world has been used since the dawn of humanity as we know, life cycle assessment helps us analyze the environmental impact of a material's entire life cycle, which includes its extraction, production, transportation, and distribution. And after analyzing each material, we have found an average environmental impact reduction of 15.4% from the base case scenario to the alternate case scenario. Individually, it shows the highest amount of reduction is in global warming, followed by fossil fuel depletion and ozone depletion. The reduction has happened due to the partial replacement of coal fly ash and silica fume, as their production and transportation are less reliant on fossil fuels and emit significantly less carbon dioxide or any other harmful gases like chlorine or bromine. However, silica fume often has impurities like lead and chromium and this may lead to a comparatively less environmental reduction in ecotoxicity and carcinogenic impact. But these can be justified with a massive increase in service life and an overall reduction of environmental impact. This mixed design tries to impart the least amount of environmental impact without compromising durability. Our project will bring us one step closer to achieve sustainable development goals. It will ensure a resilient infrastructure resulting in a sustainable communities. It will utilize huge amounts of industrial byproducts. And finally, by reducing global warming and other environmental effects, it will be bold action against climate change. It's time for taking innovative steps in construction for the betterment of planet Earth.
So you saw that there was a lot of cool editing and insights from the students. We definitely ask the students to do to, uh, to do a lot of trials and errors to find their optimized mixer. And you saw that how Silica Film and Fly Ash uh, ended up with the uh, improvement in the environmental impacts and the durability of the mixtures. Um, one thing that I should note is that uh, last year uh, I was working at the University of Michigan and I was teaching a course on sustainable infrastructure and I used this, uh, the same format of the competition but in terms of a course projects at the end and it worked really <coughs> well, also they were not uh, civil engineering students, I was at the School of Environment and Sustainability. So I would recommend this uh, uh, materials that are available on the website, the rules, the tool, the instruction about how to use the tool, they are all over there. Uh, please use, feel free to use it in your course or in any other educational documents or uh, sessions that you would like to uh, organize in the future. Um, lastly, um, all right, I have to thank uh, three different communities from ACI who, ha who have helped us a lot with this competition. This competition would have not happened without their help. First of all, uh, key ACI staff, student faculty, and young professional activity coordinator, and also the competition coordinator helped us a lot with you know, uh, communicating between the students and also <coughs> the, the uh, competition chair. This competition is sponsored by S801, similar to other competitions, but we got a tremendous amount of support from ACI 130 committee. It was really helpful, and uh, tens of volunteers for reviewing the reports, reviewing the videos, and also uh, joining as a judge for the interviews from these committees. These two committees uh, came and helped us a lot to make this happen. Um, and this is also a, a small article that we published in Concrete International a few years ago. Feel free to download it and uh, whatever I discussed now uh, was summarized over there as well. Thank you very much for listening to this presentation. Feel free to ask questions.